So, I am having problems with pack number two again. Um, I thought I had fixed it with that um, one broken fuse that I found. Um, unfortunately, um, that has not solved the problem. This pack is still um, out of balance with the rest of the pack and seems to be straying even further the longer, the, you know. You know, if I leave it a week, week and a half, it'll stray, you know, 0.15 volts, which is a lot for, for these kind of packs, considering all 13 of the other packs are all within 0 0.001. Um, so I definitely think I have a problem with this pack, and it is likely a self-discharging battery. Unfortunately, um, there's no easy way to find a self-discharging battery. The only way to find it really is going to be, I am going to have to cut all the fuses on this pack and let this sit for a few days. All the batteries are currently at 3.99 volts, you know, and we can just double check that. You can see all the batteries are currently at 3.99 volts and um, they're all in parallel, so they are going to, you know, there is not going to be one of these batteries that's obviously out of voltage um, because all the batteries are at 3.99 volts. So what I'm going to have to do is cut all the fuses. Luckily, I only have to cut them on one side. That will break the parallel between all the batteries. And then I need to wait three, four days. And then I can come back in and voltage check every battery. And 99% of these batteries should remain at 3.99 volts. And one, maybe two batteries is probably going to have dropped to 3.9 volts, something like that. Um, and those batteries are the ones that are dragging the pack down by self-discharging. Um, so, uh, it's a pain. I mean, there are 80 batteries here. So, you know, that's 80 fuses I have to snip. Um, but I think uh, I kind of have no choice at this at this point to um, cut all the uh, cut all the fuse wires. Um, I'm going to try and probably actually pull out the fuse wires as well, just to make my life simpler when I go back to reinstall them. I don't have all the little cut wires lying everywhere, so I'll probably try and pull the fuse wires off with a soldering iron and a pair of, pair of pliers. It'll take a little longer up front, but I think it'll save time on the back end. But um, yeah, I think the only way to to test for a self-discharging cell is to, you know, put all these batteries back into individual, effectively individual batteries, not connected in parallel, and then wait and see which one starts to starts to drop off. So, I'm gonna disconnect all these. I'll probably time lapse you, and then uh, uh, I'll check back in a few days and see if we have any results. <laughs>
Okay, well, as I said, I didn't want to have to do it, but it's done now. All the uh, negative sides are disconnected. Um, I melted off the leads, um, off the individual batteries, and then kind of used flush cutters to cut it off the bus bar. Um, looks a bit of a mess now, but it'll all reflow nicely with a little bit of fresh solder, some fresh, um, um, some fresh uh, fuse wires. And um, yeah, I'm gonna put this aside for three or four days, come back and voltage check every battery, and we will see if there's any uh, misbehaving batteries in the pack. So, uh, it's 24 hours later, and honestly, I didn't even have to wait three or four days because I just happened to check some of the batteries on the pack, and I found two culprits immediately. So I think I found my two bad batteries. Um, again, when we left yesterday, everything was at 3.99, and um, let's see, can you see that voltmeter? Yeah, you can, well, let's move it over a little bit. Um, yeah, so... Um, 3.99, 3.99, 3 3.99, 3.99. So everything's still at, you know, everything's still at 3.99, but these two batteries here, this one's already self-discharged down to 3.87. This one's self-discharged to 3.85. So these two have already dropped 0.2 volts in 24 hours. So these two are self-discharging, so I will have to rip these two cells out and replace them. Um, I do have, well, I, I you know, um, some people wonder if it's even possible to replace two batteries without disassembling the whole pack. It is technically possible. If you take a pair of snips and snip these little plastic tabs off and push from underneath, you can actually push out the battery and replace just one battery. But since I've already snipped all the, the fuses, the only thing holding this bus bar on is a couple zip ties, I'm just gonna pop these zip ties, lift the lid off, and replace the cells I need to. I'm also gonna just do a quick double check that no other batteries are self-discharging, but right off the bat, I think I found the culprit that these two are self-discharging. It's interesting that they are right next to each other. So either that means they came from the same modem pack that was bad and they're self-discharging or I put a lot of heat in this area when I was soldering maybe there was an issue and I put a lot of heat into this area and the heat damaged these two cells but these two cells are self-discharging and do need to be um, replaced but like I said I'm going to just do a quick double check on the voltage and then I'm going to slap in two cells and 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 uh, you know re re-solder all the batteries together Okay, so pack two is back in service. Um, you can see it is out of balance. There it is. Um, it's 3.99 and all the other packs are at 4.08, um, which is fine. I'll put, a, I'll, put my, um, I'll put my ISDT Q8 on it and throw a little voltage at it to bring it in balance. But I do think we have replaced the two discharging cells and I think once I bring it back in balance, um, everything should uh, continue to function normally.